this week to lift all of the mask mandates, virtually all of them. Is it too soon? Well, Ontario's top doctor says he's not concerned about COVID-19 cases rising after the lifting of the mask mandates. It comes into effect at 12.01 a.m. on Saturday. It means masks will no longer be required on public transit, in hospitals and in shelters. The mandates, however, will stay in place for retirement and long-term care homes. So those are the two exceptions. The province first implemented mask mandates way back when in October 2020, of course, to decrease the spread of coronavirus. But Chief Medical Officer of Health Dr. Kieran Moore says he's, he's not really worried about an increase in cases because of the high vaccination rate, the declining virus spread in the province. But he also says because Ontarians do continue to wear masks, whether there's a mandate in place or not, that we are cautious, we are careful, we are kind and considerate to one another. We have Dr. Raywat Dianandan on the line now, epidemiologist and science communicator, communicator rather at the University of Ottawa, better communicator than I am a lot of the time. Uh, Dr. Dianandan, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So what is your feeling on this? Is, is, was it time to lift these remaining mandates or given that some of them affect um, very vulnerable settings like hospitals, would there have been some logic behind extending those remaining mandates a little bit longer? It, it is very much a judgment call. We have to remember that these restrictions, if you want to call them restrictions, masking to my mind is not a restriction. Um, these interventions are going to come down at some point, but I think it's too early to take them out of those key places, especially hospitals. It makes no sense to me right now to remove the mandate from hospitals. And I think the hospitals agree with me because it looks like pretty much every single hospital in Ontario is um, choosing to maintain their mandates individually, despite what the province is saying. Do you think the hospitals were surprised by that decision coming down from the province? It was signaled some days ago, so there's no surprise there. I think there's probably some disappointment that the uh, guidance isn't coming from on high. It's always harder to enact a policy locally when it isn't supported um, from higher up. So the downloading of responsibility onto individuals and to individual institutions also downloads um, resource allocations and some struggles in communicating uh, the uh, the logic for decision making to to individual uh, employees and so forth. So it's unfortunate. Now, what does it mean for the progress of the pandemic? Previously, when mask mandates were lifted, either in Ontario or in other parts of the continent, we've seen increased levels of transmission without exception. Dr. Mura suggested that our high levels of vaccination will protect us, and they will to a large extent. But we have large uh, numbers of people who have two doses. Not a large number of people have had three doses or four. And it's those additional boosters that prevent transmission. The first two are great for reducing hospitalizations and death, which is important. But if we want to curtail transmission, those additional boosters are important. And I'm really particularly concerned for the immunocompromised and for people who can't be vaccinated. And I'm talking about kids under five. They might have a vaccine solution in a few weeks, but right now they don't. So if you want to protect kids under five, everybody else has to do what it takes to blunt transmission. And that usually means wearing a mask. And when we say, you know, cases are down, transmission is down, there are still 11 people in Ottawa Hospital with COVID. Um, why, is it those reasons that you mentioned that why for hospitals in particular, masks make sense? Um, and do you think that you ever see a time when it would make sense to, I mean, it just seems to be common sense now to keep a mask on when you're in those kinds of environments. But do you see a time when... I think, I, I think some level of masking is going to be with us indefinitely, like we have in Asia, where if you feel sick on a certain day, wear a mask to signal to other people that you care about their health. That should never go away, frankly. But to require it to get into institutions, I think that will fall by the wayside at some point, probably later this year. And it comes down to at least three indicators. Number one is how much transmission is happening in your community. And the CDC has published some thresholds to consider uh, for making that determination. Number two is the vaccination rate in your community. I'm talking here about three and four doses as well as vaccination for toddlers and number three is how much space you have in your in your hospital system we do have space now however we still have a backlog of procedures and we have overworked really stressed out healthcare workers many of whom have to stay home because they are sick with covid so while that stress on the hospital system is maintained in many hospitals not all of them but many of them i, I think we're going to be seeing the mass mandate to help slow down that process so you would say going forward for any individual, you would recommend if you have a cough, if you have a sore throat and you have to be out and about on that day, just going forward that that's just a courtesy thing to throw a mask on on those days? Um, 
Yeah, that's the long-term view right now. I think everyone should wear a mask if you are in an outdoor, sorry, an indoor public setting, even if you don't have um, a cough or whatever, because you don't know if you're an asymptomatic carrier. Perhaps there's someone in your life, like a, a toddler or a senior, who will be in, um, unduly affected by your infection. It's not just about your protection, it's protection of other people. So the way, again, we blunt the spread of this disease is to do the bare minimum to protect each other. And the bare minimum is to wear a good quality mask. It costs very little, it um, it's, has almost zero deleterious effects, and it's highly effective. So it makes no sense to me to be doing away with this most effective intervention, despite what people say, it is very effective, which is mask wearing. And what do you think the reception will be if a fourth booster becomes <laughs> a more of an option and in terms of people being receptive to that or thinking that they, they still should be doing more to protect themselves than others or people are just weary of it and, and going to ignore it until, in fact, there is more of an outbreak or more of a concern and then maybe jump on board? It depends on how we talk about it. Right now, no one talks about the fourth dose, really, or the third dose. So vaccination has fallen from the public consciousness in terms of media and other kinds of uh, public consciousness campaigns. I think when the Omicron-specific formulation becomes widely available, as it will in the fall, that will change some minds because that will really be specifically targeted to preventing transmission of this disease. And if everyone gets that dose, we're looking at really diminished transmission. And that will be a severe game changer to my mind. And eventually we'll have intranasal vaccines and maybe a pan-coronavirus vaccine, which is good for all variants. So it comes down to how we talk about it, how we deploy it, and how we combat the misinformation, which to my mind is the biggest barrier. And, and likely at some point it's just bundled in with the flu vaccine and every fall we talk about getting it, both? It's possible. I don't think so, though. I think um, boosters for COVID won't be annual. Um, I'm not sure what the what the uh, interval will be, but I don't think it'll be that way. The flu vaccine has to be annual because the, the circulating strains change all the time. Um, at some point that will not be the case for COVID, I think. We don't, no one knows for sure. Um, and it comes out of the goal also. <clears throat> With COVID, the, the goal here is to prevent hospitalization and death for the most part. And a few shots is good enough for that, frankly. All right, Dr. Raywat Janandan, whose advice is continue to throw that mask on when you're going to be in an indoor environment, protect yourself, protect others. And then going forward, when we get to that point where maybe that's no longer necessary, you just throw one on when you're not feeling well and you have to be out amongst people and uh, consider that booster it's 247 on news that point where maybe that